Hello, this is the final lecture in a series of lectures on the lesson tool in Moodle. If you're doing this through the lesson on lessons in Moodle, in UTP, then you are here. And in this video, I'm going to show how I construct this chunk of this lesson. And I'm going to start out by doing something quite similar to this part that you've already seen. However, I'm going to expand on that so that the side branch will be more complicated and will contain questions. Before getting into it, I'm going to show you an example from my own teaching. So this is a question from a lesson early in one of my courses. And without getting into a bunch of physics, uh, this thing here is called a motion diagram and the students have to interpret it. And the correct answer is this one here. But if they have answered this or this, then they've probably misunderstood how to represent an object that turns around during its motion. And so the lesson takes them here to an explanation of how to draw things that are turning around, and then it takes them to another question about an object turning around. But on the other hand, if they answer this one, or this one, then they're misunderstanding how to represent things speeding up and slowing down, and so they're instead taken to an explanation of how to do that, and then a simpler question where there's no turning around, but there is speeding up and slowing down. So we're going to build something pretty similar to this. So I'm going to build this in stages, partly because I think that'll be less confusing, partly to show you how you could perhaps build a simpler lesson and then maybe the following year come back and improve on it. And also partly because I'm not really trying to show you a specific structure of a lesson, I'm trying to give you an impression for how you can conceive of all sorts of different structures for lessons. So to start with, I've already partly built this because it's just like something you've already seen. So I have built this cluster of questions here. It's right here, and it's just like what I showed you in the last video. Here is an expanded view of this cluster we already have, where a student arrives from the content page in the cluster, and they're given a random question. And it's all set up so that the incorrect answers all go back to the start of cluster, which will then assign a new random question, and the correct answers go to the end of cluster, which heads back to the main menu. Now let's start fixing this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is create two content pages, one which is an explanation which corresponds to incorrect answer A, and the second of which is an explanation which corresponds to incorrect answer B. And then I will redirect the links from those incorrect answers to those explanations, and those explanations will link back to the start of the cluster. So I'm going to come down after this cluster and I'm going to make a new content page. And I've got my text already in another file so I can just copy it in here. And I know that I want this to link back to the beginning of that cluster. And so there we go. Oops. And now since explanation B is going to be very similar. I'm just going to copy that and do a couple of edits to it. Okay, so now having done those edits, all I have to do is revise these links from the questions back in the cluster. And I'll have to do the same thing with the other questions. Having done that, we now have a perfectly functional and quite responsive lesson. What I've just done is a lot like what I did back here earlier in the lesson, except there are multiple explanations attached to multiple questions in a cluster. But let's keep going. So now I'm going to put some branches after each of those explanations, which would contain the simpler questions, which directly target ideas A and B. And I'll have to set that up so that the correct answers go to the end of branches, and the incorrect answers go back to the explanations. Remember, branches start with a content page and end with an end of branch. 
and the end of branches will link back to the original cluster. And remember that I could be doing this with more clusters instead of branches. They're really interchangeable. I'm doing it with branches partly just to remind you that these two possibilities both exist. So the first step is just going to make a couple of end of branches. So there, now I've got the content pages and ends of branches, which will be the bread in a sandwich of questions. Uh, I'm going to edit these ends of branches so they have distinctive names so that they're easier to keep organized. And I'm also going to set their links. Remember, they need to go back to the beginning of this cluster up here. And you begin to see why I'm very picky about changing the names of my branches and clusters so that I can find them. So now I just need to fill each of these branches up with questions. And remember that the correct answer here needs to go to the end of this branch. And the incorrect answers need to go back to the beginning of the branch, which is this explanation. And so now I'm just going to copy that question a bunch of times and do some edits on it to finish this off. There's one more step because at the moment these explanations are just leading back to the beginning of the cluster and instead they should be acting as the beginnings of branches. So let me fix that. So remember, I need to make this a unseen question within a content page. That's how you do a branch. So there it is in its glorious simplicity. Uh, I'll just make a comment. I could have made these links from the incorrect answers in the questions just be unseen questions within content page so that they would go to another question directly. But at the moment, I have them coming back to the explanation to reinforce that explanation. That's a choice. Okay, and so here we go. We have now our cluster up here of our original questions. The correct answers lead down to this end of cluster, which go to the main menu. The incorrect answers go to either of these explanations, which go on into the branch. And each of the branches has correct answers, which lead to the end of the branch, which go back up to the original cluster and incorrect answers, which take the student back to the explanation before asking them another question. What could be simpler? So I hope this has been useful. I hope I've given you some impressions for some particular designs of lessons you might consider, but I think much more importantly, the idea that you can link this all up in sort of any way you can dream up to make a flow through a lesson that will take students from one idea to another and which can respond to possible misconceptions they might have.